if you're about to click away because I'm old and not cool, you might want to rethink that. I have faced more big blank walls than you can imagine. I'm going to give you five timeless techniques that will work for any style and any budget, not just old ladies. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume you already have the basics. A good mattress, a sofa, dining table and chairs, a dresser. If you want a video on how I recommend you acquire those on a budget, let me know in the comments. Today, we're just talking about five ways to fill a blank wall. The quick overview. Furniture is great, so we'll start there. But what if you don't have the budget or the space? Shelves are incredibly versatile. One of my favorite tricks. Framed art and mirrors are fabulous. With a few tips, they can be very affordable. Sconces and other decorative objects add character. And lastly, paint and wallpaper and other wall treatments. This last area can be the least or the most expensive. Those are the stock in trade for professional designers. I'm going to run through each of those techniques and show you how to do it easily, on a budget, while creating a look that's unique to you. Back away from the HGTV look. Here we go. Furniture. Most people put a sofa against a wall and then all they see is the big blank wall. So they run out to buy a big sofa picture that a zillion other people have. Or they slap up a bunch of little photos and wonder why it's not working. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. The three pieces of case goods. Now, case goods are wood furniture versus upholstered furniture. Anyway, case goods that really fill a wall are a bookcase, an armoire, and a china cabinet. If your space can accommodate one of those but the budget is reluctant, start by checking if anyone in your family has a piece they're no longer using. Or spend a minute every day on Facebook Marketplace. Or hit the thrift stores in your area every week. Or yard and estate sales until you find pieces that suit your style and your price range. I saw this traditional china cabinet at a Goodwill in Grand Rapids, Michigan three months ago for under $50. If you're willing to do minor repairs, refinish or paint, you might even get something for free. When my son got his first real job and was living in a high rise, I snagged three bookshelves down by the dumpsters. They were sturdy. Avoiding brand new furniture makes it more likely that you'll end up with a distinctive space. A table or low dresser is another good anchor that you can decorate around. Remember that sofa with a blank wall behind it? I love using this corner hutch or the way bookcases look behind a sofa. Shelves. One of my favorite ways to fill a large blank wall is a hanging shelf. They're frequently less expensive than furniture and extremely versatile. The first time I saw this done 50 years ago, a thick old battered piece of wood from a barn was mounted on heavy corbels and used as a sideboard in a narrow dining area. In my daughter's entry, we used a floating shelf like a narrow console table with a large mirror from the local Goodwill. She has four young children, so not much is on the shelf in this picture. The next place we used hanging shelves was above her TV, which was set on top of a sideboard. This is an inexpensive way to create the effect of built-in bookcases. My daughter says that when people come into her home for the first time, these shelves above her television 
are the spot where people stop and give it a second look, make a nice comment about it. My husband used black pipe to create these shelves in our kitchen, to create industrial style shelves. There's a link in the description to that video. Make sure larger shelves are attached to studs so they will be sturdy. Smaller shelves are also nice to fill smaller spaces, like these two shelves I picked up for three and four dollars at a thrift store. From a clean, modern look, to rustic, to traditional, hanging shelves are a favorite go-to of mine. Art. If you're not ready to start shopping at art galleries, I'm sending you back to the thrift store. I've linked below my video on shopping at thrift stores. If you're just trying to fill those big blank walls, look for large prints that you like or at least large frames that you like. An effective way to anchor a large space is with a large picture or mirror. If you find a good frame with an unappealing image, you can hang an empty frame or replace the art with a mirror or an original creation of your own or a downloaded picture. Groups of two, three, and four pictures that go together are also an easy way to fill a large space if you're unsure about creating a gallery wall. If you see a picture you like, be sure to look around for any friends it might have. I frequently pick up pairs of pictures like these two botanicals, these two little prints, and these, and these two signed and numbered bird prints, all from thrift stores. In my opinion, the first secret to a good gallery wall is to go big. The second tip is to have a unifying element, similar frames or styles or colors that's why having groups of pictures makes the task easier. This wall has a pair of tinted lithographs with two other pieces with similar colors and frames. A pair of bird prints readily joins the rest of this flock. And here's another gallery wall with a pair of prints and here. Mirrors. I include mirrors with art, but want to emphasize how useful they are when decorating. If you have a small table or shelf next to your front door or a dresser in your bedroom, mirrors are great to add above them. Large mirrors make an easy anchor for a gallery wall, reflecting light and opening the space. Don't eliminate a frame that you could easily paint. This wall with a large mirror and a collection of four botanicals is simple enough for a first time decorator to do. In the last two years, I've purchased at least nine mirrors of all different sizes from thrift stores. I have a link below to my video, Nine Easy French DIYs, that shows how I use mirrors throughout my house. You can also create a fun gallery wall just using mirrors. Now on to objects. First, sconces. My mother was a huge fan of candles, especially used in wall sconces. These are in my home. These are from my daughter's homes. Whether in pairs or singles, they work well with mirrors and art or simply standing on their own. Other objects, an amazing assortment of objects can be hung directly on walls or placed in frames or shadow boxes or on shelves. Think about hobbies and collections, interests you have. 
Antique tapestries were some of the earliest items hung on walls to keep out the cold. Smaller needlework or clothing or a simple piece of fabric could be framed. Collections of plates or copper or antlers or clocks or coins or baskets or costume jewelry or old skis and snowshoes. I did live in Colorado for over 30 years. My grandmother's beaded bags from the 1920s are much more interesting displayed than in a drawer. The use of objects and collections is one of the most creative and interesting ways to fill a large blank wall. Just a word of caution, if you run out and buy a bunch of trendy objects, I'm thinking those little windmills or a retro truck thing, what's with the old trucks? <laughs> those types of objects will date your space pretty quickly. Wherever possible, shop a basement or attic or closet, not Target or craft stores. Just saying. Paint and wallpaper. Even if you're renting, changing a wall with paint or peel and stick wallpaper can expensively be done and undone. Accent walls have had a moment and seem to be in disfavor now. Just like wallpaper has been out of vogue for years and is now making a big comeback. If you've watched many of my videos, you know I don't care if something is trending or on its way out. But since wallpaper is now trending, it makes it easier to find attractive patterns at reasonable prices. Walls can also be upholstered, basically Batting and then fabric is stapled to a wall with a welt cord applied. Pricey, but very upscale. Another way to break up a large blank wall is with more permanent treatments like moldings and trims. In traditionally styled homes, chair rail moldings are simple to add and can be painted or papered either above or below. The recommended height of a chair rail is 28 to 32 inches up from the floor. Arts and crafts homes are popular now and have a completely different scale. Board and batten paneling can be as high as five or six feet with a plate rack on top. If these terrific old trims interest you, the best source of information in my opinion, is Brent Hull. He is the expert on all woodwork. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description. This is a really fun rabbit hole to go down for design nerds like me. <laughs> Give this video a like if you've gotten some inspiration and let me know in the comments what you have found works on those big walls and if you would like a video on how to easily create original art to fill those frames you just picked up at the thrift store. If you think that would be too challenging, just know the most creative solutions and the best stories begin with the biggest challenges. See you next time.